Welcome once again. We start in Kenya where its president William Ruto on Sunday called for rich countries to be held accountable for driving global warming and for a revamp of international financial institutions to better fight climate change. Poor nations, especially those in Africa, have been hit disproportionately uh, hard by the fallout from climate change, which has, of course, aggra aggravated droughts and flooding. Now, despite being the least responsible for carbon emissions. All right, in an interview on the sidelines of the African Union Summit in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, where climate change is a major topic, Ruto said the time was ripe for a paradigm shift, adding that Africa should not be treated as beggars in climate talks. For years, African governments have been demanding that the world's top polluters pay for the harm that their emissions have caused, known as loss and damage. The latest round of UN climate talks held in Egypt last year agreed on a fund to cover costs that developing countries face from climate-linked natural disasters and impacts like rising sea levels. Yet, activists say the fund remains empty. Joining us this morning is public affairs analyst Gakuna and Gina Castro, all the way from Kenya. He joins us to discuss the significance of this conversation. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning too and thank you for having me this morning. All right, at uh, COP27 last year, part of the agreements reached was uh, the, that loss and damage be paid to the African countries who have, or the countries who have unfortunately had to bear the brunt of the impact of climate change. Um, it's uh, how many months after, and we're still having conversations about this. Uh, can you bring us up to speed on why, first of all, this conversation is important and, you know, where we are at? Let me first of all state that this conversation is very important and it has come at a time when it is uh, ripe for its discussion, actually in the uh, national level, uh, regional and international level. You know, the thing of climate change is something that devastating many countries, not only the developing countries, actually even the developed countries. So it's a thing that uh, we need to uh, actually uh, think in us that we are living with it that this kind of change is here and we need to deal with it as it is you know and this discussion actually was discussed in of course the the, the cop 27 which was held in egypt and again it uh, raised up uh during the weekend when the president and the heads of government uh met in addis ababa for the au summit and uh, the conversation has risen at uh, this time when the, uh, uh, the group is actually experienced harsh uh, adversities of climate change. And this comes when the, the economies, actually the developing economies feel that uh, they are getting sublined or, 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 or they are getting uh, sidelined uh, in the fight for climate change and this developing economy, especially the economies in Africa, they are feeling that they are not included or they are not uh, brought on the table to be part and parcel of discussing how to deal with or, or how to mitigate the effects of climate change. Uh, my view that Africa uh, may not or may have not participated too much in uh, creating this problem of climate change and when the president of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, said that it is actually the uh, developed economies that they are the polluters of the and, and, and the, uh, the, the the major causes of this climate change, that Africa need to uh, uh, reinvent and actually uh, have uh, have them on the table in the, the on the table of uh, discussing this uh, mitigation of climate change and how these funds, of course. Uh, limited for fighting climate change um, may be contributed to the continent of Africa. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, if you say that Africa doesn't contribute so much, you know, to the, you know, climate change com um, you know, conversation and, of course, the damage that has been done to the, you know, to the planet or is still being done, um, you know, do you think that African leaders, because there's going to be the Africa Climate Summit in September this year, I believe, do you think African leaders should maybe, you know, be focused on other things that are, you know, bedeviling and troubling the, the continent, like security challenges and, and, you know, providing food for Africans and, and proper health care? Should that be more of the focus, you know, instead of continuing to, you know, dance the tune of climate change? Uh, you know, the, the effects of climate change, we cannot run away from it. Neither does the, 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 the heads of states and presidents should run away from the effects of climate change. 
because it is affecting us as Africans and it's affecting the continent of Africa. Uh, of course, we have so much other problems that Africa needs to deal with. As you said, the issues of insecurity in Africa, uh, terrorism and uh, insurgencies, let's say even coups around Africa. We, you know, we have a lot of issues, even governance and corruption that we need to deal with as Africans and as African head of state needs to uh, actually get uh, in conscious about the problems we have uh, as African people. But the, if, the, 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 the issue of climate change is something that we should not uh, run away from because as is the thing that we need to discuss, uh, as Africans, and we resolve uh, these issues in an African way and African manner. Uh, why we are getting this problem of uh, dealing with climate change is because there are some policies that is being in, uh, or, or it's being actually dictated to Africans, and they are feeling like uh, we cannot actually reach to this limit. That we are this point, they are pushing us to this limit, and we doesn't have uh, much resources to mitigate this uh, climate change. And you know, the, 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 such policies uh, have come uh, in their hand when the uh, global economies are actually experiencing uh, a short and uh, short waves, of course, and inflation high uh, inflation rates. Right. And they are feeling adopting uh, or maybe adopting full uh, or the, the, the full level of uh, changing to uh, green energy will cost uh, Africans more and than uh, are actually. Uh, and, and they're not the, 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 the major contributors because, you know, the major contributors and the, the effects of climate change is much contributed by the mining of coal and the mining, actually it's the mining process that have contributed much to... Yakun, I uh, quite agree with you, you know, and the um, interesting but unfortunate part of this will be that even though they have agreed at COP27 to make payments for loss and damage, we have a 24-member transitional committee that is meant to be set up and to have their first meeting in March. And have two more meetings before COP28, but they're not. I mean, from what it looks like, we don't see that happening yet. But we will keep talking about this, and we look forward to having you join us again. And hopefully, by then, the 24 member panel would have been set up and there'll be progress made in that regard. Thank you so much, Gakuna, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me.